Okay, looks like we're at the top of the hour. This is Brian Kaskovalsian from eWebinars, and I want to welcome you to the Storm Restoration Webinar. This webinar is called A No-Nonsense Approach to Settling Your Storm-Related Loss Fairly and with Less Stress. We're with Larry Gephardt, President of Ridgetop Exteriors, a nationally recognized and certified storm restoration contractor. Larry is also the author of the Storm Restoration Guide. And today we're going to learn about the storm restoration process and some important points to be aware of so that as a homeowner you can make better, more informed choices. So welcome to the program, Larry. Thanks, Brian. I'm happy to be here. Great. So, oh, there you are. Hey. So, Larry, let's just get right into it. Let's, you know, let's say my home has just been hit by hail. What should I be doing? Brian, first, uh, take a deep breath and, and don't panic. Uh, next, walk around your home and do a visual inspection of the siding, the gutters, and whatever else you can see uh, to the best of your ability. Make sure there are no leaks, broken glass, etc. Great. So should I be getting up on the roof at this point? Only if it's a low-sloped uh, roof and you feel safe doing that and if you know what you're looking for. That's a good point. So what is it exactly that I should be concerned about on the roof? Brian, that's probably one of the most important things that a homeowner needs to understand. It can be very difficult to spot damage, even with a trained eye. It is virtually impossible to see from on the ground. Uh, most folks, when they think of hail damage, imagine holes in their roof and water pouring into their house. Now, having water uh, getting is a real possibility, depending on the size and duration of the storm, but it's pretty rare to actually see holes in the roof. Okay, so if there aren't any holes, how would water get in? Good question, Brian. And if you don't mind, I'd like to show you an example um, as we get to this of how this exactly works. Um, when the hail hits your roof, several things can, can and do happen. Again, in rare cases, you may actually get a few holes. The majority of the time, though, what's happening is that the impact of the hailstone is breaking the backing of the shingle and creating a loss of the granules that protect the asphalt portion of the shingle. I'll give you an example here. This is a small piece of shingle that we have. And as you can see in the middle, this is where a hail impact has occurred. And all of the granules have been lost in that area. The granules are the main protector of the shingle from water and all the other elements. And then also when that happens, what happens on the back side, which is our mat, and we'll get into the, the mat here just in a second, but this area will get cracked. And now we have lost all of our protection for that shingle. So it makes sense then that a homeowner wants to get the damage fixed now before it becomes worse. Absolutely. Uh, now with that said, it's important to also know that most insurance companies have a time limit to file a claim and to have the work completed. One year from the date of the storm is pretty common. The, but wait a minute. The damage may take a few years to de develop, you said, but if I don't file a claim in the first year or so, I'm out of luck? Yep. I know it sounds odd, but that's how it works in most cases. It's set up like that because let's say you have a leak in your roof. It could be difficult to determine the true cause of it. You had hail damage several years prior to the leak developing. Now, we all know that is probably caused by the hail damage, but insurance companies can easily say that it's too late to determine the true cause of the leak. Now you're on your own for the repair or the replacement cost. Well, that kind of sucks. I know. That's why it's important to get an inspection done as soon as it's practical for you. Okay, so I've walked around the yard and I've got a pretty good indication that I've had some good sized hail, maybe cracks in my siding, the car is all dinged up. Now what? Well, Brian, your neighborhood probably is going to be bombarded with several contractors knocking on your door. A lot of them are going to try to scare you into doing something right away. Unless you have a tree sticking into the living room, you can take some time to educate yourself about the entire process, from the very first step to the very last step. That includes selecting a contractor. 
that makes sense, Larry. So I've heard some real horror stories about fraud and some real scammers in the roofing industry, especially after a, law, a, a, a big storm. So what are some of the most important things that I should look out for? That's a great question, Brian, and I'm, I'm glad you asked it. Some red flags to look for are, for a starter, a contractor asking for a large down payment amount. A stable contractor should be able to do the work for no more than 20% down or so. If they ask for much more prior to starting the actual work, that could be a sign that they've got a cash flow issue. Be especially aware of anyone that wants to be paid in cash. Checks are best. That way you can track it. Make sure you ask for a proof of liability and workers' comp insurance. Ask them to show you a current certificate. If a worker is injured on your property and the contractor doesn't have coverage, you can be liable for any medical costs. We've even heard of homeowners being sued by the contractor's employee for personal injury and winning. No way. You've got to be kidding. Oh, yeah. You'd be surprised the types of things that can go wrong. The typical homeowners are unaware of most of them. Okay, so the insurance and down payments are good information. What else do I need to know? A couple of things. Uh, one is the contractor going to pull your permits for the job. You shouldn't have to take time off work to get permits. This is a basic part of the job for any contractor. Now, here's a real common ploy. If the contractor is offering to pay your deductible or give kickbacks, illegal in most states, in fact, there are a lot of states passing legislation on these matters. Again, waiving a deductible or offering kickbacks on an insurance job are illegal. That's pretty easy for most folks to understand. Yeah, you'd think so. I mean, the insurance company is already going to pay for the vast majority of the repairs. No sense getting greedy or, I guess, going to jail. So that's, uh, that's really good to know. What, what else, Larry? I would ask a contractor how long they've been in business. Ask for a copy of their incorporation or look them up online with your state. If you can't find them, that's a pretty good sign that they aren't legitimate. Also, make sure that they have a contractor's license. You'll find that in a storm, a bunch of guys in trucks will swoop in like vultures, and many don't, don't care about licensing or the event of, of the codes. Make sure you have a contractor that plays by the rules. Look for certifications by the manufacturer. Most ma major manufacturers have certification programs to ensure the right materials and methods are being used when installing their products. It only makes sense to hire someone who has taken the extra steps to prove that they know what they're doing. Be especially careful of the guy who wants to sign something right away or starts to offer discounts to, or to put money in your pocket. Remember the fraud we talked about earlier? Lastly, if the contractor is giving you options or they're just trying to get the work done as fast as they can so they can move on to the next house. Yeah, it it seems to me like if you've got if you, if you're uh, you know if there's this storm damage that happens, and you get a bunch of contractors kind of descending in on an area, that you're going to have a bunch of guys that are just trying to swoop up as much cash as they can. They're going to say whatever they can to get you to sign the documents. They are going to make all kinds of promises that may or may not be true. So it seems to me like you really got to get yourself educated on, on contractors and uh, the good and the bad. And, and, and I know from the, from the storm restoration guide that you wrote that all of these red flags and, and things are, are in there. So I've educated myself now on contractors. And I've found a con contractor that I feel comfortable with. So what am I doing next? Brian, have the contractor you've chosen come out and perform an assessment of all your damages that may have occurred to your property during this storm. This should be done at no charge and without any obligation on your part. Then make sure they give you a written assessment of the damage. Uh, notice if they offer assistance, in filing a claim. In fact, once the claim is opened, a really good contractor will pretty much handle the vast majority of the paperwork also. Make sure the contractor is going to meet with your insurance adjuster to negotiate and confirm all damages. Uh, you should be there for the adjustment meetings also. Be sure you get copies of all your paperwork you sign, that all the terms are to your satisfaction. If a contractor him and haws or won't give you the re reasonable terms, find another contractor. There certainly won't be a shortage of them to choose from. 
Make sure the contractor goes with the insurance scope of damage. We have found that about 50% of the claims need to have readjustments to them. You know, Larry, as a, as a homeowner, as somebody that, you know, if I'm, if I'm going through this, chances are probably pretty good. I mean, from your experience, most homeowners have never really been through something like this before, right? Absolutely correct. So do you, do you recommend that? So if I'm going to work with a contractor, do I, I definitely want to work with a contractor that understands all of this all the insurance stuff, if you will, um, is it, so let's say that, that somebody says, oh, you know, they're going to make, or they're going to get me more money or, or something, but they're not going to deal with the insurance company. They're just going to tell me what to do. Do I want to get involved in a situation like that where I want to deal with the insurance company, or is it something that, you know, I want a contractor that actually knows what he's doing in dealing with the claims? Brian, my opinion on that is most contractors that deal with storm damage have dealt with thousands and thousands of claims and thousands and thousands of insurance companies. Uh, they understand the process, uh, they understand the local codes, and they're going to basically go to bat for you and make sure that everything that you have coming uh, is, is on your insurance paperwork and you are taken care of on it. Um, the average homeowner, this process can seem pretty overwhelming. Not familiar with the processes, there is a lot of unfamiliar terminology, and considering that is only something that folks have planned for, it can be pretty stressful for them. But it doesn't have to be. How's that? Well, if we're taking your time to get educated about all of this important part of that is about the insurance process, the insurance company is going to come out and do an inspection. They, this will be performed by an adjuster. If they find damage, most companies will pay you up front for what they call the ACV, or actual cash value of the repairs. What they're doing here is compensating you for the value of the used roof. In other words, if it would cost $10,000 to replace your roof, but your roof is halfway through its life, they will pay you $5,000 now, minus your deductible. Let's say your deductible is $1,000. Is, is that a fairly common amount? Yeah, 500 to 1,000. Uh, those are probably ones that you see the most. Um, so if they're going to pay you $5,000 for the ACV today, they'll take off the deductible and you'll receive a $4,000 check. Once the work is completed, the balance in this case, 5,000, would be paid to you and the contractor once the work has been completed. It's important to work with a contractor that is versed in the insurance end of things. Once you settle for a substandard settlement and a bad roof is put on, it's too late to redo. So, uh, you know, I see up on the screen that you put up a, I guess, a sample insurance document. And yeah. it's, I, I, I'm assuming that there's a standard software that everybody uses? Yes, there is. Most insurance companies and contractors will use a program called Xactimate. Okay. And this the way that program works, as you can see, the diagram here is of the roof. Um, that's how they obtain all the measurements and, and linear feet and square feet of the roof or the siding. And then down at the bottom is the quantity. Uh, you have your unit cost, which is based on your zip code uh, from Xactimate. And then you have your RCV, which is replacement cost value, your depreciation, and your ACV, which is your actual cash value. So as we had spoke earlier, uh, in this case, if you look down towards the bottom, the amounts on this job, the total claim was $8,228.18. The ACV check, which we talked about first, would be the amount that they would send you originally, which is the $5,926 minus your deductible. And then once the roof has been completed, they will send you the depreciation check of the $2301.58 which if you add those two together, would equal the 8228.18. So, okay, so I'm glad, you, I'm glad you put this up here and explained this because, you know, looking at this and never 
having really seen something like this before, this could be really confusing. So if I understand this properly, the total amount of the job in this case was $8,228.18. When the insurance adjuster came out and did his assessment of the, of the damage and of the roof, they wrote a check on the spot for $5,926.60 minus the deductible. And we said, you said earlier that the deductible is usually how much, 500 or 1,000? 500 and 1,000 are the typical two deductibles you're going to see, Brian. Okay, so to make the math easy on this then, uh, $5,926.60 minus 1,000 is they got a check for $4,926.60. They hired the contractor then to come out and do the roof. So they used, so once the roof was done, then the contractor submitted the paperwork, and then there was another check written back to the homeowner for an additional $2,301.58. Is that right? Brian, you're absolutely correct. And so the homeowner then in this case pay, essentially paid $1,000 and got a brand new roof. Correct. Okay, and as you said before, this is now, because it's done, uh, it, because the settlement was a proper settlement, now they've got a new roof, so they shouldn't have any issues. They've got a new warranty on the roof, and, and it's covered, right? The roof will be covered for the, for the lifetime of the, uh, of the roof itself. Okay, so I want to go back to something that we were talking about before, and because I think that it's really important, as in, you know, this is an educational webinar, and I think it's really important that we go back and we talk about the uh, contractors that are going to come knocking on your door. You're going to be inundated with these contractors, and somebody is going to say, well, you know, they realize, okay, instead of $8,228, I'm going to make I'll make $7,228, I'll kick the people back $1,000, their $1,000 deductible. So basically they get a brand new roof for $0. I would imagine that there's a lot of that going on. There is a lot of that going on, Brian, and that raises a big red flag because if the insurance company is saying that it costs $8,228.18 to replace the roof, but someone's willing to do it for you for $7,218.18, where is that $1,000 difference coming from? <laughs> That's My a good guess, point. it would be from the materials and the labor that the contractor is putting on the job. Yeah, because it's not like there's you know, $5,000 of profit in here that he could just lop off 1000 bucks. Yeah, not, definitely not that type of profit margin in this business. Yeah. So what do you say to people i know what you said earlier but i think it, it would be good for us to you know maybe issue another warning and to, what do you say to people when you meet with them and they say well larry you know the the somebody else another contractor said that they're going to cover my deductible for me what what do you say to those people well two things first of all i'd like to sit down with this insurance paper and go through this with them Show them, kind of have them explain or me explain to them that, you know, where this $500 or $1,000 that they're not charging you for, you know, whether the contractor is going to come up with it. And the second thing is, you know, as we talked earlier, insurance companies are getting very, very strict on this, is that's a fraud situation. And I wouldn't want to put myself in that situation, nor would I want to put a homeowner in that situation. So what if somebody kind of insists? What if they say, well, look, Larry, then, you know, I don't have $1,000 right now, and uh, this guy's offering to do it, and I'm just going to take a chance. What, why don't you, you know, will you do that for me? I, I, you know, I know you've got a very large roofing company. You probably get hit with this, uh, you know, a lot. What, what do you say to somebody like that? Uh, that's something that, that we will not cross that line on. Um, myself, uh, all of our employees, we need to sleep at night. I do not want to get a phone call from an insurance company in regards to some type of fraud situation. So we would probably not be the right company for you at that time. Well, okay, so you'd walk away from the job. So let's say that they went and uh, I want to just take this one step 
a step further. I know I'm, I'm, I'm really hammering in on this, but if I take this one step further and I say, okay, Larry, fine, then I want to do business with you if you're not going to, if you're not going to pay my deductible, and I actually go and I hire this other contractor. Now, aside from the fact that, yeah, they're going to shortcut on the, on the materials and all that, maybe I'm okay with that, but what can actually happen to me as, as the homeowner? Let's say the insurance company finds out. I mean, what can actually happen? Well, that's a that's a felony fraud charge. Uh, that's insurance fraud, which is which which comes across as a felony. Really? Yes. Okay. So it's pretty heavy duty then. Pretty heavy duty, not something that's a a, a small traffic ticket. Okay. <laughs> all right. So uh, all right. So uh, okay. So from all of this stuff, that's probably not a good thing to do. So it is fraud, but it's actually like felony insurance fraud. So Correct. okay, all right. So um, so it you know it sounds to me like you really know what you're doing here, Larry. Uh, Brian, it's taken a lot of years to learn everything and get the right systems in place. Ultimately, doing the right thing for the homeowner uh, is the goal here. Yeah. Well, this quick version of do's and don'ts have really kind of opened my eyes on the repercussions of making an uninformed decision. And, you know, I really want to thank you for taking the time out to, uh, to do this and, uh, and really in, in putting the, the uh, guidebook out there also, the Storm Restoration Guide, which I would strongly encourage if, if the people on the call don't have that already, I would strongly encourage them to go download it, go read it, and actually follow the instructions that you lay out step by step in there. So uh, do you want to leave us with uh, one or two final thoughts on uh, what you would feel would be, you know, maybe absolute items not to forget from all of this? Well, Brian, I, I want to thank you also. Uh, you asked some really good questions. If there are one or two things I want people to remember from this, uh, it would be that you should never feel like you're being pressured by a contractor or your insurance company. Your exterior restoration process should be enjoyable, stress-free, and exciting for you and your family. This is an excellent opportunity to improve upon or even totally change the look of your home. Starting the process is as easy as downloading your, our storm restoration guide, then filling out the form on the web page, and then we'll contact you to schedule your no-cost, no-obligation inspection. My staff and I look forward to being of service to you. Great. So excellent information uh, to wrap up with on our webinar, Larry. Uh, thank you again for taking the time out. I know how busy you are. I'm sure everyone got some great insight on what to look for now that a storm has rolled through your town. Thanks to everybody for joining us today. And don't forget to download your storm restoration guide and uh, fill out the contact form below before you close out the browser. Uh, we'll leave this up in just a minute. If you're interested in talking to, uh, to uh, Ridgetop Exteriors, if you're in uh, one of the areas where they have offices, you can call their toll-free number that is up on the screen. There should also be, down below, there should also be a uh, contact form that you can fill out and uh, talk to the good folks at Ridgetop Exteriors. And I'm sure that Larry wouldn't mind if you are not in an area that they have an office and you do have questions about this stuff, look first to the guide. But if there's something in the guide that uh, maybe doesn't answer the question or the situation that you're up against, uh, I'm sure Larry's team will be more than happy to answer any questions you've got for, for them. So um, again, this is Brian with eWebinars. And uh, thank you for your time. We hope that you have gotten tremendous value from the time you've spent with us here.